this morning. All right, let's bring in Jillian Snyder, a retired police officer and policy director for the R Street Institute's Criminal Justice and Civil Liberties team. She's also an adjunct lecturer at New York's uh, John Jay College. Thanks for getting up so early with us on this such a terrible story. So you heard our report there from Adrian, the FBI working with local law enforcement on the investigation. What does that look like from the local side of things? So honestly, the the local agencies will have to collaborate in this kind of situation. When you have a mass casualty to this extent, um, you will always bring in the ATF, the FBI, any other federal agencies to help aid the local law enforcement investigation. Jillian, you know, you, you hear law enforcement talk about what a horrific, horrific scene it was um, at Sandy Hook and just sort of the unimaginable um, uh, just what that looks like. And, and I think we can all sort of imagine, but these, these are weapons of war. These are weapons that destroy bodies. And these are little bodies that we're talking about, babies that do not have um, ID on them. And, and these officers are, are now forced to sort of process a scene like that. How in the world do, do you train to, to look at something like that? There is no training for this. Um, as someone who did retire from law enforcement and had to unfortunately see situations similar to this, there is absolutely no way that you can be prepared to see this, to just absorb this, to process it. And I, unfortunately, like law enforcement officers do this every single day and then also have to bear the burden of talking to the families of the victims, which for the victims is horrific, and for the law enforcement who have to deliver that message is even, is, is horrible. Can't imagine. What is your, I mean, I guess, what is your view on, you carry, uh, police officers carry a weapon, right, to protect the public, uh, to serve the public. What is your view that on the other side of an interaction, you have somebody else who could have a, a weapon just like yours or even more powerful? These weapons in particular were way more powerful than most law enforcement officers carry on them regularly. Um, so we, we understand that. Again, it's jurisdictional. Um, in Texas, it differs from where I worked in New York City. We don't traditionally see weapons of this caliber, but police officers do go out there every single day knowing that individuals that they may encounter, um, individuals that may be doing bad things, may have weapons that are more powerful than the ones we carry. Yeah, it's a really unique situation in the United States where you have more weapons than people in the U.S. And quite frankly, anybody around the corner of law enforcement is dealing with could be armed to the teeth. Yes. I mean, and we're hoping that that's not the case. And it is not. Um, honestly, where I worked in New York City, okay. we didn't have it to that extent. But again, you have to just be prepared always. Jillian Snyder, thank you so much for your expertise and analysis. Really great to have you. Thank you so much.